Thank you so much for participating in this webinar. Uh, my name is Dr. Jihan Chobanolu. Okay, I would like to just start the webinar uh, by going through a little bit about the um, Association of North America Higher Education International. Um, the mission of ANE as, uh, as a not-for-profit organization is to promote and encourage a global culture at member institutions um, and globalize student and faculty successes, enhance global initiatives among member institutions and uh, deepen the global uh, engagement. Programs of ANE, as you can uh, see, is that we have visiting scholars program, partnerships programs, journals, conferences, awards, and distinguished lecture series. So, uh, one of the open access journals that ANE has is the International Interdisciplinary Business Economics Advancement Journal, uh, ibajournal.org. When we say open access, we mean that this is 100% uh, uh, open access, uh, free to submit, free to access all the articles here. Um, also, we have a Journal of Global Education and Research, uh, journal ane.org, uh, which is the the journal of the another journal of ane. We also have several conferences. One of them is Global Education, uh, Global Conference on Education and Research, uh, which just happened about a month ago in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, we are having another conference coming for IVA Conference International. Interdisciplinary Business Economics Advancement Conference. That's going to take place 18, 23, November 2017. And the website is ibaconference.org. Um, we will also have Graduate Student Research Conference in Business and Economics. This also happened in May in Sarasota. And also Global Conference on Services Management is the other conference of ANE, which is going to take place uh, in Volterra, Italy on October third through seventh. Uh, also, ANE has some uh, distinguished lecture series. We, we featured uh, Professor Ravidar from Yale University. That was in May 22nd. Also, Dr. Uh, Levent Altenay was our uh, distinguished lecture uh, speaker uh, at the end of May last month. And soon we are having uh, Dr. Professor Jason Shaw. He is the uh, editor of the Academy uh, of Management Journal. Uh, he's going to talk on July 20th. Uh, also, we have the lecture series, which is what we are having the first one right now. Uh, as you can see, that we have the first one today, RAP, PLS, and Introduction uh, by uh, Professor Mustafa Razoli Manesh. Um, and also, uh, coming up is the uh, Professor Jason Show, as we said, July 20th. And uh, we also will have another one on innovative analytical approaches in tourism and marketing studies by Hossein Olia, Dr. Hossein Olia. Um, that's on July 28. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our uh, speaker today, Rap PLS in introduction. Uh, Dr. Mustafa Razul Limanesh is a lecturer and senior researcher at the School of Housing, Building and Planning, University of Saints, Malaysia. He has published several articles in high-impact SSCI index journals such as Tourism Management, Journal of Travel Research, Journal of Sustainable Tourism, Cities, Habitat International, International Journal of Tourism Research, and Asia Pacific Journal of Tourism Research. Most of his papers, uh, published papers utilize PLS SEM method. Dr. Mustafa has recently also collaborated with Prof. Ned Koch, uh, developer of WARP, WARP PLS software, and their work was published in Tourism Management Perspectives and Journal of Sustainable Tourism. Uh, Dr. Mustafa has conducted several workshops on PLS SEM using WARP PLS. Without further ado, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Mustafa to uh, have his presentation. Uh, Dr. Mustafa, please take it over from here. I just stopped sharing my screen. If you please share your screen, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Chihan. You can hear me, yeah? 
Yes, we can hear you and I can see your screen. If you were to please uh, uh, make your presentation big by clicking on, yeah, that okay. one. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, talk about uh, PLSSCM and VARP PLS uh, in this webinar. Uh, I would like to thank and uh, thank uh, Anahi for uh, providing this uh, excellent platform for uh, sharing. Uh, that is very good, and uh, um, I'm happy to. Uh, to uh, tonight <laughs> because now I'm from Malaysia and now it's tonight in Malaysia it's night and uh, uh, I can share uh, and talk about uh, VAR PLS. Uh, good morning and uh, good uh, afternoon and good evening to all participants from uh, around the world uh, that attend to this uh, webinar. Uh, very briefly and very quick uh, before uh, introducing VAR PLS, uh, I want to talk about uh, PLSSCM and uh, uh, some basic of the PLSSCM and then go to VAR PLS. Uh, structural equation modeling as a second generation of analysis technique uh, used because of two main reasons instead of the uh, first generation of analysis technique. Uh, the first reason to use uh, SEM is um, a structural equation modeling can deal with the latent variable instead of observed variable. The first generation work with the observed variable, but uh, by SEM, we can uh, work with the latent variable that cannot measure uh, directly like satisfaction, loyalty, and uh, this construct, and uh, uh, need to measure by some indicators, that indicators of observed variable. And uh, another reason uh, to use SEM is we can perform a model including different, uh, different layers, uh, but uh, it's not possible by uh, first generation of analysis. So, uh, based on these two reasons, we prefer to use second generation of analysis and SAM. Uh, there are some uh, basic uh, concepts in SAM when we use uh, uh, SEM uh, that need to uh, get familiar with uh, this basic. Uh, in the model, when we use SAM, uh, um, there are two uh, uh, the different uh, definition for uh, 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 construct and variable, we use outer, we use exogenous and endogenous construct instead of uh, uh, independent variable and dependent variable in first generation. Also, uh, uh, inner model and outer model, outer model in SEM uh, refer to the relationship between uh, observed variable and indicators and uh, the construct. So when we say outer model, it's referred to uh, the relation between items and constructs. So we talk about, we talk within a construct. And when we say inner model and the inner model referred or a structural model referred to relationship between construct. So here, the relationship between construct referred to inner or structural model and a relation between observed and the construct referred to outer model. Also, we can see here, this is uh, referred to uh, outer model and this relationship, uh, relationship referred to inner model and structural model. Uh, but uh, for a measurement model or outer model, uh, we have two types of construct, reflective construct and formative construct and need to know about these two types, two different types of construct in SEM. Uh, reflective construct uh, uh, refer to a construct that uh, the items are uh, uh, exchangeable and uh, um, each item separately and each indicator separately can uh, represent the meaning of construct. 
So the items in uh, reflective construct are uh, similar to each other and uh, uh, the equation that uh, can represent reflective construct is this equation. Uh, we uh, call the, the, low, uh, the relationship between construct and each item uh, loading in reflective construct. But the formative construct, formative construct is uh, uh, the items together can form the specific construct. And uh, the items are not uh, exchangeable. So uh, the items are different features and different aspects of a construct. For example, satisfaction here, we uh, want to measure satisfaction based on two sets of items. Um, in uh, here, we uh, want to measure satisfaction about hotel uh, based on these three items. I feel well in this hotel. I'm always happy to stay in this hotel and I recommend this hotel to my friend. Uh, these three items are exchangeable and we can use each item separately to measure satisfaction. If we remove one of these items, the meaning of satisfaction won't change. But in uh, other side, we measure satisfaction based on uh, another uh, items and different set of items. These items refer to uh, the quality of service in this hotel and the, the personnel, the personnel is friendly and the room is well equipped and they, uh, refer to equipment of uh, rooms. So we measure satisfaction based on these items from different perspectives. So uh, these items, each one represent one specific perspective of satisfaction. So each item cannot be removed from this construct. And if we remove one item, it means we lose some uh, uh, part of definition of satisfaction. So this is a differences between a reflective and formative construct. But uh, recently, the literature introduced another type of construct called composite construct. And this composite construct, um, some of the, the, the literature uh, categorize uh, the composite construct uh, under formative uh, definition and of under formative construct. and uh, uh, define uh, formative construct on two different types, composite and causal construct. And uh, uh, this type of uh, formative construct uh, called causal uh, formative and uh, composite is an, another type of formative construct. So uh, this type of construct also recently introduced to the literature of uh, uh, SEM. Okay. For formative construct and reflective, reflective construct, we need to use different criteria to assess reliability and validity. So it's very important to understand the concept and the type of construct uh, uh, if, uh, because if, uh, if uh, we don't understand the type of construct, it may be uh, conclude in uh, bias result and uh, so, uh, the results is not reliable uh, if we have misunderstanding uh, about formating or reflecting. Uh, and the last things that uh, I want to uh, very uh, quick uh, refer to it is the difference between uh, PLS SEM and covariance based SEM. There are two types of uh, uh, structural equation modeling. And the traditional type is uh, a covariance-based uh, structural equation modeling, and the um, variance-based SEM is uh, for recent years, uh, and PLS is uh, uh, one type of variance-based SEM. Covariance-based SEM focus on uh, minimizing the differences between covariance matrix the covariance matrix from the model and covariance matrix from the uh, data. 
So we try to minimize the differences between these two covariance matrices. And uh, so uh, because of this, uh, in covariance space SAM, we focus on goodness of fit uh, criteria because based on goodness of fit, we need to find uh, uh, when we, uh, we uh, aim to minimize the differences between these two matrices. But the PLS SEM focus on maximizing the variance of uh, dependent variable. So uh, the goal of these two type of SEM is totally different. And uh, when we talk about PLS, so it means that the um, objective, the goal of this study is uh, uh, um, maximization of uh, uh, max maximization of variance of dependent variable is different with covariance based SEM. Uh, so um, the important reason and the first reason to uh, uh, choose a PLS SEM or variance based SEM is uh, referred to the objective of a study. If the objective of a study is theory development and uh, uh, we need to use PLS SEM and variance based SEM. But if the objective is uh, objective of a study is theory testing, we need to stick to covariance based SEM. But uh, there are some differences, other differences between two types of SEM. Uh, PLS SEM can deal with the non normal data and uh, um, smaller sample size. Uh, but uh, CBSM need a larger sample size and uh, the data should be normal distributed. And also PLS SCM uh, can uh, uh, handle a complex model and a model including uh, a combination of reflective and formative construct that covariance based SEM uh, cannot uh, involve and cannot handle this type of complex model. So uh, there are some differences between these two types of uh, uh, SEM. Uh, there are different software to perform uh, covariance-based SEM like EMOS, Israel M Plus, and uh, uh, for uh, variance-based SEM and uh, sorry for variance-based SEM and uh, PLS, there are also different software like VAR PLS, Smart PLS, Odonco, and different and other different uh, softwares. And uh, in this webinar, uh, we will talk about VAR PLS. Okay. Uh, VAR PLS. Uh, Let's uh, uh, start with VAR PLS. Uh, okay. Uh, to install the VAR PLS, you need to go to VAR PLS website. And uh, in VAR PLS website, you can download the uh, latest version of VAR PLS. The latest version of VAR PLS is uh, VAR PLS 6. VAR PLS is a nonlinear PLS SEM software that uh, uh, was developed by uh, Professor Ned Koch uh, and uh, uh, developed by Professor Ned Koch uh, in 2009 and uh, And uh, a different version of uh, VAR PLS uh, uh, were developed during uh, 2009 until 2016. And the latest version, VAR PLS 6, was released on June of 2017, this year in June. Uh, to install the VAR PLS, you need to go to uh, VAR PLS uh, website. And uh, here in the VAR PLS website, uh, click on if you if you don't have if you before uh, you didn't install VAR PLS, uh, you need to click here and uh, download the uh, uh, VAR PLS software. 
and uh, but if you uh, already uh, installed the var pls version 2 to version 5 uh, just click on a very small file here and uh, you can run uh, uh, and install var pls 6 in your uh, uh, computer you can have var pls 5 and var pl other version and var pls 6 together in your computer uh, when you install uh, when you download and install var pls uh, you when you open uh, the var pls software you can see this window in var pls and uh, if uh, you are the first uh, if this is the first time that you use var pls you can uh, uh, install uh, and start a three months trial version of var pls and uh, after three months, you need to purchase the license for one year. So uh, um, when you uh, start, just need to proceed to um, use the software. Uh, uh, I will try to um, create a very simple model and show you different features of our PLS uh, and how uh, we can interpret the result of uh, analysis. So uh, let's start. Uh, VAR PLS is a, a five step, uh, uh, need to proceed five steps. It's very simple. And uh, after uh, proceeding these five uh, steps, you can see the result and interpret the result uh, creating by VAR PLS. So it's, uh, proceed to step one. In step one, uh, you have uh, some options: uh, open or create a project. If you have, uh, if you already have a, a project, so just click on uh, open project file. If you don't have, you need to create a new project. Uh, okay you click on the folder you want to save uh, your project okay uh, webinar var okay save and uh, uh, then go to a step two in a step two when you click a step two you can read the data file. VAR PLS can uh, read the different uh, extension of data file, uh, Excel file and the uh, text file, uh, tab delimited file or, uh, or comma delimited file. So uh, click on read for file from file and uh, I have a data file here but uh, here the extension is text. I change to all file and I can read my Excel file from here. Okay. Read the data file, just click on next and finish. Your data file uh, appear here and you can check uh, the a data file is it okay you can click on yes and proceed to step three in step three do some uh, pre-processed data like check check for uh, missing value and uh, zero variance and other problem make maybe happen in uh, your data file and uh, finally standardize your data and click ok and you can see a standardized data in uh, step three. Click yes and go to step four. Step four is uh, uh, the step you can create your framework and your model, define SEM model. Go to this window and in this window you have a different option to create uh, your model. Uh, the first uh, option is uh, uh, create latent variable. So uh, 
uh, based on this uh, option, you can create latent variable in uh, your model. Uh, create latent variable and click here. Uh, pop up this window and you can see here uh, some indi the indicators from your data file. I want to create a model uh, with the three construct, positive perception of resident, negative perception, and support. And want to see the effect of positive perception, negative, and support, uh, positive and negative perception on support for tourism development. Positive perception, here I have five indicators for positive perception. Just click add and add the indicator to this window. Okay, say appear positive perception here. Create negative perception and add the items to negative perception, five items and save. You can move the uh, construct by click on click by cursor and uh, change the location of. It. And the last one is uh, support for tourism development, and the items for support is here. We have seven, eight items for support. Just click on add and add all items. Just one thing here, here you can select reflective or formative types of construct. So the default is reflective, but if the construct is formative, just you can click here and change the type of construct. Uh, but uh, this construct is reflective and same. So we have the uh, three constructs that we cr already created. Uh, other uh, option here is a direct link option click and create direct link click first construct and click on second one the arrow will be appear and again create link so now your model is uh, completed and uh, uh, you created the model simple model and uh, now we want to perform a PLS analysis for this model. In this window, just save model and close. Dr. Mustafa, I just yes. want to jump in here. I want to tell our um, attendees if they have any questions, they can click on the chat button and type here, and I'm reviewing them. If there's any question, you can ask Dr. Mustafa. This way we can try to make it interactive, but it, of course at the end of the session, we're going to open up for your questions, just to remind everybody. Okay, thank you. And uh, after creating the model, you proceed to step five. A step five is perform SEM analysis. In this step, uh, var PLS uh, perform the analysis and you can see the result in this window. Okay, here you can see the result of uh, your analysis uh, for uh, effect of positive perception and negative perception on support. Okay, uh, in view, uh, uh, here you have a view button and uh, this uh, in, uh, in view you can see the different result uh, here to interpret the result of uh, analysis. Uh, the first one is uh, view general result. Uh, we can see some general information, uh, the version of RPLS use, type of license, and uh, uh, especially here you can see general model elements, uh, uh, the missing data algorithm, outer model algorithm, default for inner model algorithm, uh, and uh, resampling method, number of resample, and uh, number of cases. Number of cases, your data, your sample size. So in this window, you can see some general information for your uh, analysis. 
okay? And uh, you have a different option to see the result. Now I want to, uh, let me go back to the uh, PowerPoint here. And uh, 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 brief explanation about assessment of measurement model and assessment of structural model. Uh, okay, Dr. when we... Somebody is asking, please show us how you calculated it. Calculate what? Uh, I guess that uh, perform SEM, you clicked on it. Gina calls in, it says, please show us how you calculated it in this one. Okay, let me back to... Uh, they must have missed it. Probably, uh, they, yeah, that one. Okay. Yep. Last step is last step uh, was proceed to step five. When we created model in uh, step four, just click on uh, proceed to step five, this uh, icon, and just perform the analysis, okay? And uh, perform SEM analysis. When we click on perform SEM analysis, this window will appear here, and uh, you can see all results from uh, all PLS result here. So I will explain later that which uh, uh, item uh, you can use for uh, interpreting uh, measurement model and structural assessment of measurement model and structural model. But before that, just want to uh, a brief explanation that uh, for assessment of measurement model and structural model. So I uh, go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, for assessment of uh, model using PLS, we need to do two-step assessment. The first step is uh, measurement model assessment, and the second step is a structural model assessment. In measurement model assessment, there are different criteria for reflective and formative construct. For reflective construct, we need to do indicator reliability and uh, construct reliability or internal consistency. And for validity, we need to check convergent validity and discriminant validity based on different criteria. To assess indicator reliability, we need to check the loading of, form, uh, loading of reflective construct. The loading should be higher than 0 0.7, but uh, uh, higher than 0 0.4 and is acceptable if uh, the other criteria like uh, composite reliability and the average variance extracted or AVE meet the threshold and is higher than threshold. So, but the lower than 0.3 is not acceptable for indicator reliability. For uh, construct reliability, there are some uh, different criteria like uh, Kornbach alpha and composite reliability and, and composite reliability is more suitable for PLS. Composite reliability or CR should be higher than uh, 0.7. For convergent validity, AVE should be higher than 0.5. And for discriminant validity, we need to check some criteria like formula larger criterion, cross-loading, and uh, one recent uh, criterion is called HTMT, heterotrate monotrate ratio, uh, for discriminant validity. So the first step is assessment of uh, measurement model. And for reflective construct, we need to check these uh, criteria for measurement model. So back to a result of uh, VAR PLS. The result of VAR PLS, so the first thing is uh, assessment of uh, check the loading. Okay, so here in view, all things, all result of VAR PLS in this view window. In view, you can check uh, in uh, this section, view indicator loading and cross loading. You can see the loading of each construct. But VAR PLS provide different uh, option for loading, combined loading, normalized combined pattern structure. Uh, the best one is combined loading that use uh, uh, correlation for uh, loading and uh, 
the cross loading is the result after uh, oblique rotation. So we choose a view combined loading and see the result here. The, uh, the values within the uh, brackets are loading, loading of uh, items of a positive perception. So the loading all are higher than 0 0.7, so it's acceptable. And for negative perception also, and for support. So you can see the result all are uh, higher than 0 0.4, uh, most of them higher than 0 0.7. And some of them is not uh, higher than 0 0.7, uh, but uh, higher than 0 0.4. And need to check CR and AVE for convergent validity and uh, uh, construct reliability. So this is the first step for assessment of measurement model. Uh, for uh, convergent validity and construct reliability, we need to check CR and AVE. Here, view latent variable coefficient. Latent variable coefficient. You can see all the result, all the criteria that you need to assess convergent validity and construct reliability here. You can check the composite reliability higher than 0 0.7, Kornbach alpha, and average variance extracted or AVE higher than 0 0.5. So the result uh, uh, confirmed the uh, validity and uh, the reliability and convergent validity of these three constructs, these three reflective constructs. But one more thing need to be checked for um, measurement model. It's discriminant validity. Discriminant validity show the differences between uh, construct and the construct, uh, the distinction between construct and uh, construct should be enough different to include the model. So uh, for uh, discriminant validity, we need to check uh, other option here, view latent variable coefficient. Uh, sorry. Um, Correlation among latent variable. This option gives you the information that you need for Fowler and Larker criterion. This table show the uh, value, show the correlation, and in diagonal you can see within the bracket in diagonal the value is square root of AVE for discriminant validity. The square root of AVE of each construct should be higher than correlation of this construct with other construct. For example, here, square root is, is 0 0.774, and the correlation is 0 0.14, and 0 0.302. So the uh, square root of AV is higher than correlation with other construct. And also for other construct, uh, so need to check the discriminant validity based on this formula larger criterion that we can find uh, uh, here. And uh, for cross-loading, if you want to check cross-loading, also you can back to indicator loading and cross-loading and see the cross-loading uh, of uh, all indicator here. Dr. Mustafa? Yes. Uh, quickly, a couple of questions here. What happens if you have extremely high Kronbach alpha greater than 0 0.98 or 0 0.99? Uh, high uh, Kronbach alpha and composite reliability is a sign of redundancy within a reflective construct. So if we get high Kronbach alpha or composite reliability, uh, we need to remove some items from the reflective construct. So it means that some of the items are exactly similar or same construct and should be removed. Okay, to solve it. Another quick question here. How to handle a model with digitonomous indigenous variable in WARP PLS? I don't know if this is related to what you are telling, but... Uh, okay, uh, if, uh, let me explain if, uh, these uh, basic steps because uh, this question uh, is an uh, uh, advanced oh, yeah. question in PLS, oh. and uh, 
later I will uh, talk about sure, it. Sure, we'll, we'll go back. And there are some other questions, but I'm going to ask them at the end, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, based on uh, this step, we can check the uh, measurement model in uh, VARP PLS. Uh, just want to show something interesting here. When you look at the latent variable coefficient option here, uh, addition to composite reliability ADE, you can see many useful information here that VAR PLS provide. Uh, for each latent variable, you can see uh, minimum, maximum, median, mode, skewness, courtesies, and some different, uh, some other different methods to assess normality of latent variable. And also, you can uh, click on view and see the uh, distribution of uh, uh, latent variable. Uh, so. Uh, based on this information, you can check the normality in uh, different ways. I understand PLS, we no need to check the normality, but uh, high, very high non-normal data also maybe uh, make some problem in uh, PLS. So uh, sometimes it's uh, useful to check the normality of uh, a latent variable. Um, okay, so uh, after assessment of measurement model, uh, we need to check a structural model. A structural model or inner model uh, need to check some criteria like R square, the value of R square. Uh, there are different uh, idea about the value of R square. Uh, so the value of R square uh, totally depend on the area of your research. Uh, some research in behavioral science and uh, so like consumer behavior. Uh, say the R square higher than 0 0.2 is uh, good enough and acceptable and can be considered large. But uh, some study in marketing say uh, the value of 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 can be considered high and the value of 0 0.2 for R square is low. But it depends on the area of study and the independent variable you involve because in, um, including uh, um, larger number of uh, variable will increase the R square. So it depends on your study. Uh, another things that should be checked in the structural model and important things is the uh, PAD coefficient and significance of PAD coefficient. Uh, VAR PLS provide uh, PAD coefficient and p-value together here. And uh, based on this, you can check uh, uh, the value of PAD coefficient and uh, the significance level of PAD coefficient. For this study, these two values, uh, uh, um, p-value for these two relationships are significant. Okay, now I uh, want to show you uh, some interesting things in VAR PLS, and it's very important. Okay. Uh, VAR PLS uh, provide for you a different uh, algorithm for outer model and inner model. So if you click here in setting uh, section and view uh, or change general setting, you can see uh, three options here. These three sections uh, give you different option for outer model. So here you can select uh, different algorithms for outer model. For example, if I can select PLS mode A, here is a traditional algorithm for PLS. And uh, here you can select the uh, inner model algorithm. I click on linear inner model algorithm. And also resampling method. You can select bootstrapping, jackknifing, blindfolding, and a, a three stable resampling that is a combination of this resampling method. Uh, so I select PLS mode A and linear and save. And again, I proceed to uh, perform SEM. Uh, here, the result is different to a previous result. But uh, now I uh, keep this uh, result, this window here. And uh, okay, 
just change in uh, this setting section linear change linear to verb three uh, verb pls provide a different algorithm for inner model that uh, addition to linear verb two and verb three are non-linear algorithm for uh, inner model verb two verb two represent u curve or j curve relationship between construct and verb three uh, uh, represent s care relationship between construct so if we set on verb three save the result and okay again do the analysis okay so you can see the result here totally different with the linear result so okay I put two here. R square uh, totally increase, and uh, R square now is uh, 0 0.27. Be, uh, path coefficient for effect of positive perception on support increase a bit, and the uh, effect of negative perception on support uh, increase. And uh, uh, so uh, when you select nonlinear, you can see the result uh, uh, totally change. Uh, sometimes you can get significant result based on nonlinear, but uh, for linear, you cannot get significant result. Uh, let me show a plot for linear uh, relationship here. Okay. In view section, another part is a view plot, linear or nonlinear relationship among latent variable. So when you perform the analysis, you can see the plot for relationship and this uh, can help to interpret the result. Uh, okay, when you click on this, uh, result, uh, uh, relation between positive perception and support is VARP, VARP mean non-linear non and also negative perception and support. If you click on VARP, okay, so you can see here, the relationship between negative perception and support is a totally is a, a nonlinear curve. is a nonlinear relationship. Uh, in, uh, this uh, for plot, you can see you you have different option to see the plot. Uh, one of the interesting is uh, uh, re view relationship with data point on a standardized and with legend. So if you click on this one, you can see the data point and the relation between positive per negative perception and support. So if you want to interpret this result, it means uh, the relationship between negative perception and support is not uh, uh, positive or negative for all respondents. This result show the effect of uh, the relation between support and negative perception is negative for uh, some part of respondent and this relationship is positive for other part, other part how we can interpret uh, until a specific uh, amount of negative perception this relationship is negative so means for the respondent for the resident with the um, lower negative perception, when the negative perception increase, the support will decrease. But higher than a specific amount, higher than a specific amount of negative perception, the relation between negative perception and support will be positive. It means that the resident with high negative perception they will support tourism development. Why? The possible reason is when the negative perception is very high, they support tourism and try to involve to, in, to decrease the negative impact of tourism development. So nonlinear relationship can be interpreted and can give more information for um, uh, 
interpreting the behavior of uh, respondents. Uh, another important thing here for... Sorry, when do you say it's non-linear or linear? When do you say that? Uh, sometimes, based on the literature, we can understand the, the nonlinear relationship. A, a previous study or theory that we use mentioned the relationship is nonlinear relationship. Uh, sometimes we don't have uh, any evidence from the literature. We can perform linear and nonlinear and uh, see the differences between linear and nonlinear and uh, uh, interpret based on the plot and based on the final result. Okay, thank you. Okay, one interesting thing uh, here, one more interesting thing for nonlinear, uh, for this plot, uh, provide uh, also var PLS, another plot is a uh, uh, focus relationship with segments. If you click on this one, you can see the beta coefficient and p-value for different parts. So here you can see the relationship is different for the different respondents. Uh, this plot for and this segmentation can be a very good replacement for unobserved heterogeneity. This uh, curve show the uh, relationship between uh, support and negative perception is uh, different in different parts uh, for different respondents. So you can see and you can detect non-observed heterogeneity among the respondent based on this graph. Okay, this is uh, uh, interpreting of uh, using uh, nonlinear and interpret the result based on nonlinear relationship. Okay. So you can uh, find the data for uh, assessment of measurement model and structural model from this part. And uh, also you can save the data here, uh, save all model estimating to tap the limited the text file. And uh, uh, when you click here, you can save the results and uh, open the result in Excel file and use the result to report in your paper and your thesis. Okay. Uh, I don't know, I have time. Uh, I wanted to do another uh, analysis by VARP. Uh, Dr. Chihan, if I have time, I can continue at least with the one. Uh, right, uh, uh, Dr. Mustafa, yes, please do it, but maybe try to do it as quickly as possible. We are okay. uh, normally have another 15 minutes for questions, and I have some questions. For you, please do it quickly. Okay. That will be very just, important. just want to, just want to introduce a moderator in the bar PLS and conclude the uh, moderator. I think that's a great yeah. idea. Please. Okay. If you have moderator in your study and you want to include the, the moderator, okay. Uh, to change, to do any changes in your uh, model, you need to go to step four. So click on step four and go to this window to change the framework here. Now I want to introduce a, a moderator to this study. Okay, create a latent variable, create moderator first. So click here. My moderator is a, con is a construct, is a reflective construct uh, with some indicator, economic gain. I want to introduce economic gain as a moderator in this study. So uh, uh, add three indicator for economic gain and reflective, say. Uh, now you created the economic gain or your moderator. Here, uh, moderating, uh, you can see another option, moderating link option click on moderating link and create moderating effect. Okay, 
click on the moderator and just click on the relationship you, that you want to assess. All will be created automatically here. So now you created moderator for this uh, study and save model and uh, close. And proceed again to a step five, perform SEM analysis. Okay, now you can see the result of uh, moderator. Um, uh, the uh, p value, uh, uh, path coefficient of interaction effect or moderator is 0 0.09, and the p value is uh, 0 0.1. So economic gain is not significant moderator for the relationship between negative perception and support. But you can see the result here. But uh, one interesting thing for moderator, uh, if you have a moderator in your model, uh, in this uh, section, uh, plot, linear, nonlinear, uh, if you click on the plot, also you can see the uh, plot for moderator. But uh, plot for moderator is also VARP. I don't like VARP. Uh, compared between nonlinear relationship for moderator. So I go back here. I want to show you something. Uh, if you back to setting, addition to general setting that set uh, uh, outer model algorithm and inner model for whole model, you have another option, change individual inner model. Okay, if you click on this, here you can select different inner model algorithm for each relationship. Now I change the uh, interaction effect to linear. Okay, and say, perform the analysis. Okay, and see, uh, the p-value is uh, higher and the uh, beta coefficient is lower. Non-significant, uh, so you can see the result of moderator here. But uh, uh, one interesting thing for moderator, if you click on plot and uh, click on plot for interaction for moderator, okay. Uh, VAR PLS provide uh, some interesting plots for moderator. This is a 3D plot for moderator, and you can see the relationship between negative perception and support for different values of uh, economic gain in this 3D plot. You can rotate the plot and see the uh, differences when uh, economic gain change. But also you can see some traditional plot like uh, um, here you can see two uh, uh, the plots uh, two line together these two line represent uh, uh, relation between negative perception and support for the respondent the black one the black one is for high economic gain for the respondent with high economic gain, divided uh, the software automatically divided the, this moderator in two parts, high value and low value, and um, uh, draw this uh, line based on this high and low value. The red one is for low economic gain, and the black one is for high economic gain. So you can see the relation between negative perception and support for uh, the respondent and resident with low economic gain and high and compare these two together. Here you can see the slope of these two lines is not much different. So uh, uh, this, uh, this moderator is not a significant moderator for the relation between negative perception and support. Okay, and uh, VAR PLS also is very uh, 
interesting to perform a mediator and uh, but uh, um, now we have no time to perform mediator uh, can deal with the uh, complex mediator and uh, one more things that uh, want to introduce here var pls6 uh, um, there are many amazing new feature in var pls6 that uh, you can use for different uh, analysis uh, like uh, calculate power analysis uh, can give you t value and confidence interval and uh, conditional uh, probabilistic query uh, one of the uh, participants asked about uh, dichotomous uh, uh, endogenous variable uh, there are two ways uh, to deal with dichotomous endogenous variable in var pls the first thing is var pls use uh, uh, var tree and s care for relationship between construct if the uh, endogenous variable if the uh, endogenous variable is dichotomous so we can use var tree uh, algorithm for inel model var3 can handle uh, dichotomous uh, uh, endogenous construct another things that uh, is provided in var pls 6 var pls 6 is a uh, probabilistic query and uh, by this option you can uh, calculate the uh, um, probability of uh, uh, endogenous construct when uh, your IV uh, is um, you can set the IV in uh, a specific value and see the uh, dependent variable this option can be used uh, for uh, uh, analysis of uh, dichotomous uh, endogenous variable and also uh, another option uh, in uh, var pls6 multigroup analysis measurement invariance testing and uh, other option that you can uh, uh, you can see some videos for uh, okay here uh, this is uh, the website this is the weblog for var pls uh, in this weblog, uh, you can find uh, many interesting videos uh, for different feature of var pls especially for var pls 6 uh, here you can find uh, some uh, video clips that provided by professor netcock developer of var pls uh, for uh, new features of var pls 6 uh, at the end just uh, uh, want to uh, um, introduce uh, um, um, uh, uh, workshop that will be conducted by uh, Professor Netcock for uh, VAR PLS 6 in 12 and 13 of August in uh, Penang, Malaysia that uh, maybe uh, if somebody interested especially around the Malaysia can attend this uh, workshop. Okay. Dr. Chihan. Uh, Dr. Mustafa, thank you. Uh, let me read some of the questions to you. Um, one couple of people ask, um, couple of people ask, what's the smart, uh, the difference between smart PLS and warp PLS? The main differences between a smart PLS and warp PLS is warp PLS can deal with nonlinear relationships. And VAR PLS uh, originally called the uh, uh, nonlinear variance based uh, uh, software. So this is the main differences between this main uh, differences between smart PLS and VAR PLS. Also, VAR PLS provide the uh, different features uh, uh, and the criteria like full collinearity, uh, uh, full collinearity. Uh, introduced by VAR PLS for first time and the full collinearity is a good criterion to assess uh, 
uh, lateral and vertical collinearity uh, and uh, can use for a discriminant validity assessment when the model include the formative and reflective construct. So far, uh, the uh, criteria for discriminant validity just can deal with the reflective construct and single item construct, but full collinearity is uh, capable to uh, assess the discriminant validity for a model including reflective and formative. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, another question you answered like several people, okay. For, um, there was one question earlier, how to handle a model with dichotonomous endogenous variable in WARP PLS? I don't know if this is too advanced for this seminar I answer, or not, I but I know that we talked about having another one, advanced WARP PLS, but if, uh, please feel free to either um, reply at this time or, or maybe later. Prof. Chan, I, I uh, answered uh, this question for uh, dichotomous endogenous uh, okay. variable. Okay, and um, another person, again, I don't know if you answered or not, but can, can we perform HTMT in WARP PLS? So far, no. HTMT is not possible by WARP PLS, but maybe in the uh, uh, next uh, version of WARP PLS, the developer can provide HTMT. Okay, another one in a nutshell, I don't know. For inner model analysis, may I know which analysis algorithms, linear, warp two, warp two basic, warp three, warp three basic is preferable? Consider the best. What uh, the best one is warp three. When you use warp three, warp three is S care and more, compl uh, uh, more complex uh, uh, inner model algorithm and VARP3 including uh, include linear and VARP2. So the best one is VARP3 and the, the def default of VARP PLS also is VARP3 uh, algorithm. Okay, uh, thank you. I am also checking um, Facebook to see if there's any questions. I think we answered all questions, uh, Dr. Mustafa. I would like to thank you and the timing is perfect. And I also invite if there is anybody else would like to ask last minute questions. Otherwise, I wanna tell everybody that we will be um, sending you the recorded uh, webinar, what we have done for those of you who may wanna do it again or later um, or who couldn't come today. And also Dr. Mustafa, they asked the PPT. Um, we will coordinate with you to also include the PPT uh, what you have used in this uh, webinar uh, with the with the other one. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much to all of the attendees and of course Dr. Mustafa. Thank you for your expertise and sharing your knowledge with the uh, with uh, ANI members. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for joining today's webinar. Sorry for the technical problems in the beginning, but it worked out very very nice. A lot of people, Dr. Mustafa, is thanking you for a wonderful webinar. But I appreciate one more time uh, your time and, and, and uh, sharing your expertise. Uh, those of you, night, morning, afternoon, wherever you might be in the uh, different parts of the world, uh, please watch more uh, webinars that are coming on July 20. We're going to have with Jason Shaw, the editor of uh, Academy of Management, and more to come. Please watch us at anae.org, A-N-A-H-E-I.org. Have a wonderful day. Dr. Mustafa, any final words from you? Just thank you very much uh, for this amazing platform for sharing and uh, thank you very much for the participant. Uh, I hope uh, they benefit from this webinar. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you, bye.